Hi, I'm Dr. Suzanne Lippert, and I'm going to be talking today about case-based learning, which we're going to be using in our human trafficking course. So I'm just basically going to go through what it is, why we should choose it, and then how you can actually do case-based learning successfully. So what is case-based learning? Well, it's a collaborative, student-directed learning using complex, carefully designed trafficking cases. And there's a tutor that just sort of guides and mentors the process, but it truly is student-directed. Case-based learning contextualizes and integrates the basic legal, historical, social, economic, and medical perspectives so it can really support your ongoing knowledge and skill acquisition. So why should we choose case-based learning over lecturing, right? So if you sit in a lecture, you can often leave that lecture feeling like you've learned an immense amount in 50 minutes. And sometimes when you're working through the cases, it can just feel like you're working very hard to get through these cases, but I can tell you why it's worth the work. Case-based learning is really representative of the actual work that you will complete once you're out of school. So work in history, in law, in medicine, in business, in engineering, it's usually based around a problem that you need to solve. And so this is a chance to practice actually going through that. Case-based learning really demands that you effectively express yourself and communicate your ideas. And we ask you to do this by actually writing up your learning objects, which I'll talk about in a minute but you need to write them up and actually be able to present them in a written form as well as present them to your classmates. And it's really based on your discussions with your classmates. So we need you to have this active and live discussion with each other uh, and practice essentially how you can do that, how you can build arguments within the context of these discussions. It also teaches how to tame information. We are swimming in an immense amount of information at this point. And so case-based learning challenges you and teaches you how to actually find, how to interpret, how to combine empirical evidence um, so that you can then design interventions for trafficking. And it will help you maintain your knowledge. Case-based learning really is an integrated learning experience. So in this course, we have law, history and medicine and public health all represented. And the cases allow us to actually integrate across those disciplines and really challenge you to do the same. And finally, well, case-based learning is just more fun. You're actually actively talking with your classmates, you're collaborating to come up with your intervention designs, and you get to teach each other and learn from each other. All right, so let's talk about the course structure and how we actually accomplish case-based learning. As you know from the syllabus, there are several periods of lectures and discussions, and then we have these blocks of cases. Now the cases span two lecture periods and two discussion periods, because we want to give you adequate time to really get into the case um, and teach each other. Within each case, we've, we've really written and designed these cases carefully so that you will be exposed to different sociopolitical contributions to trafficking, to the legal frameworks, to the historical aspects of trafficking, to the exploitation itself and the potential harmful health effects, um, to the vulnerabilities that place people at risk for trafficking, as well as the economics that drive a lot of the systems underlying trafficking. Now, it's up to your class, since this is truly student-directed learning, within each of the teams that are formed, you all will decide to what depth you will go into each of those various topics based on the questions that you develop from the case. So let's look at that a little more closely. There are three main processes that happen in a case. The first is that you generate learning issues through reading through the case as a team. Now learning issues are essentially questions, but they're really refined questions, and I'll give you an example in a minute. So the first process is generating these learning issues. The second is that you independently research the learning issue that you've been assigned uh, to create a learning object. And the learning object is just essentially the answer to that question. Finally, you come back together as a group and you present your learning objects to each other. You discuss them, you synthesize them, and then as a group, based on that new knowledge, you come up with three potential interventions for trafficking. 
All right, again, let's just look at it a little more closely. When you're generating learning issues, you have a lecture period and a discussion period to accomplish this. Usually you start out by reading the case together, going through the different sections, and just coming up with questions. All questions from, you know, well, where exactly is Moldova? And a question like that, obviously, you can just answer in court in the, it, during the class period. So you come up with quite a number of questions during these class period. And then you refine those questions. Learning issues are certainly broader than something like, where is Moldova? But it's also something that's narrow enough that you can accomplish a credible answer within you know, the intervening time period given. It's about a weekend. So you need to do the research and be able to actually write up your learning object over the course of those intervening days. By the end of the discussion section, so after two class periods together with your team, you will generate a number of learning issues. One that is unique for each team member. Now, an example of a learning issue would be, what are the mechanisms of the transit phase of trafficking in the cocoa-producing regions in Mali and Cote d'Ivoire? And they go on to elucidate, including transportation modes, travel routes and border vulnerabilities, and the hierarchy of traffickers and recruiters. Obviously, this question warrants some research. Um, and it is one that was generated in the first year of the course. So that, just as an example of a learning issue. So now, each individual of the team has a learning issue that is theirs, and that they will then take home and independently research. So we've moved into the second process of the case-based learning, and that's actually developing your learning objects. Each individual, you, know, you need to research it, and you need to actually track how you got to the information. So we, we know, um, you know that this is valid information. You should reference if you actually pull the information from a non-governmental organization's website, if you found it in an academic ar article from history, from legal studies or from the medical literature, but we really need you to reference it well and actually track how you get to the information. And then you need to write up the learning object and post it to the course website prior to the start of that second lecture hour. Here's an example from the first year of the course where someone did a wonderful learning object. They actually include maps because they were looking at the travel routes they include actually models and business models for how the trafficking occurs, used a table to actually illustrate that effectively. They also use diagrams to demonstrate those different models um, of trafficking. And finally, obviously, just written, written material that answered the question as well. And you can see that they definitely have referenced each of their main points quite well with footnotes at the bottom. So on that final day, as each team member is coming back and teaching their learning object to each other, the team must then discuss controversies or connections between the different learning object content. And finally, each team will devise three possible interventions based on the knowledge gained from these learning objects. So again, you're presenting the learning objects, but you're starting to fit them together into actually a much more cohesive understanding of the case itself. All right, so let's just look a little bit more closely about um, at the individual days that you come together as a team. It is really helpful to actually have assigned roles because there's a lot going on when you're discussing the case. So every single team member should actively be engaged in generating questions and in refining those questions into learning issues. And finally, on that final two class periods, synthesizing the learning objects. So every team member needs to be actively engaged. The tutor who will be with each team will just help monitor the interactions and make sure that the case is proceeding forward. But they're really taking a back seat. They will be largely quiet and allow the, the team itself and the students in that team to direct which way the case is going and what type of learning issues you're developing. There is a scribe, um, and the scribe should really be conscious of refining those questions into the learning issues. This doesn't mean they have to do it themselves. 
every team member should be helping. But the scribe will really prompt people to say, well, how can you say that in a way that it can be researched and actually answered? And finally, the scribe will also record all of the learning issues that the team develops in an Excel spreadsheet that we will give to you. There's also a timekeeper, and this is an essential person. Uh, and it's also an essential skill that you'll use in just about any discipline. The timekeeper will ensure that the whole team is actually moving through the case. And you know they're really tracking, do we have enough time left to ensure that we've actually refined our questions into learning issues? So the timekeeper plays an essential role in just making sure you don't go too deeply into one you know, one topic and, and sort of fail to actually go through the entire case. And finally, there are resource managers, and this can just about be anybody on the team as well. We encourage you to bring your laptops or um, your tablets to class on the case days because you will need them. The resource managers will actively try and retrieve information to simple questions like, where exactly is Moldova? So, Simple questions, definitions, dates, maps. These will help you actually refine these larger questions into better um, and more sophisticated learning issues. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about the learning objects as well. We will have samples posted on coursework so you can really look at what we're, what we're looking for. We need you to write the question that you were answering, the learning issue that you went to research and answer. Should be a maximum of three double spaced pages of writing. You can have an additional page of diagrams or maps or charts and then another page as needed for your references. And finally the references I can't emphasize enough how important it is that you're referencing things appropriately whether it's an academic article, a book chapter, or a report from an NGO. And the final aspect I want to talk about for case-based learning is peer evaluation. You are really relying on your teammates to help you learn this content and to define what content you're going to really learn well. So we ask that you actually be very conscientious of how each team member is contributing to the group. We want you to actually evaluate whether each of the students you're working with exhibit critical thinking in developing and refining the questions that you're going to then research. Did each of the students actually demonstrate their research methods and really clearly describe how they undertook answering their learning issue? Did the student actually explain their learning object clearly? So did they actually do a good presentation? Did they get you engaged? Did, did you walk away with new knowledge from what they were presenting to you? And finally, you know, did the student ask questions of the other teammates? Did they actively contribute to the discussion? So that's really what you're going to be evaluated on as much as you are the content of your learning object. All right, so those are the basics of case-based learning as we're going to practice it in our human trafficking course. I'm really excited that you're all here and actually willing to try a new way of learning. And um, certainly ask us questions, ask your TAs questions. We are here to help you actually engage in this process in a way that's really meaningful. So I will see you in class. Is this going to be on the test? <laughs> yes. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I did say that in the last one. <laughs> it is. It is the test. <laughs> it is the test at the end. <laughs>